Right. Welcome to everyone. Uh, thanks for being here today. And um, I'd like uh, to get approval of the agenda. Uh, please raise your hand if you have any objections to anything on the agenda. Don't have it. Uh, did we add the piece, Jeff, that I was I suggested about the recommendations from two thousand one? Oh, can't hear you, Jeff. Sorry, yes, it's item nine. Oh, okay. What was that? It's item nine. Item nine. Okay, thank you. So seeing no objections, uh, we will approve the uh, agenda. Uh, any amendments uh, for the minutes of the past meeting? Seeing no objections or additions to uh, the minutes, I will note that we've approved the minutes. Any conflict of interest from any of the members, please raise your hand if you have a conflict of interest. Seeing no hands raised, uh, we have no conflict of interest in today's agenda by committee members. Um, the summary of the executive committee meeting, which I attended, though I was late. Um, the meeting of the executive committee included officers of the NCAC and chairs of the bylaws and community plan steering committee and members of the community. Discussion of the STR cap meeting and Sarah providing the review of how and what the information is on that subject to be discussed at the general meeting February 10th uh, occurred. Nominations committee uh, has to begin in April, being that no one is now selected or has come forth. Action to create nominations was discussed and uh, no one volunteers, officers and the chair in particular will take re on responsibility for that. Bylaws committee outlined their work to date and pointed to the members area and voting capabilities being the most challenging subjects so far. The steering committee is developing uh, a timeline, organizing the pieces of the plan that need revisions and updates and is developing the means of uh, surveying or soliciting the community for feedback. At the February 10th general meeting, Mark will seek nominating committee members Sarah will outline the STR cap process and bylaw steering committees will report. Okay, any questions about the executive committee meeting? No? Okay. Is that one? Um, so the next agenda item is to hear from Lynn about the work that she's been doing on the community plan. To uh, clarify, that is the, the draft matrix timeline. Oh, yes. So the um, what we talked about, we reiterated that it's, you know, it's due this year. And I was very focused on having something done by kind of bookmarking it with the following dates. And if we can go from there, then once we are kind of talk about our table of contents or our work groups, we've talked about both, but we need to refine that discussion. To be done by Thanksgiving, which seems really important. It's very hard to get things done between Thanksgiving and Christmas. And to, if possible, get our public process going before full-on summer. And full-on summer, I think, in Oregon is July and August. It's, you know, um, people are traveling, people are camping. Um, it's Oregon's shiniest season. And so I was also wanting to bookmark that we would get this kind of 
um, structural work done, hopefully this month, maybe mid-March before spring break. And then we'd be ready to set up whatever additional public meetings were required. We did not use those bookmarks yet with the county and it matters what the county thinks and whether they can you know kind of keep up with us and whether we can keep up with us but i thought that would be ideal to have those as the broad chunks of time um and then to work down into the weeks and the you know holidays and all that later on but i think there's a good patch of work that will need to be done after people convene after they review a draft and the best time to do that is probably to take it up in September and do it quickly and not, you know, I mean, I don't know if you all, I had built in a plan originally that had a second draft and, and then I thought, I don't know that you all have any understanding better than I do and you may of how many times, how many iterations people are really willing to go through. So those are the broad parameters. Um, it is really important to get done this year. And um, so I just want to set that down and then we can work around that. You all may have a different experience than I do with what happens to July and August and what happens from Thanksgiving to Christmas. And so let's talk about that and then we can do more detail after we determine our um, scope of work with regard to the outline or the table of contents or what, however we're going to define that next step. Okay, thank you. So, uh, well, we got, let's, let's let Guy do his stick and then we'll outline what our report is. Guy, do you have a report for us on plumping? Well, hold, hold up. Um, uh, I, I'm just going to kind of insert myself here. I want you guys to talk about what Lynn just talked proposed and decide whether you're on board with it and actually discuss how you're going to do it. But like, 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 like I, I'm, I'm going to, yes, like kind of poke you, like, like I'm going to put on my officer hat and poke you to make sure you're doing what you need to do. So like Lynn has come up with a plan. You need to like kind of sign on to the plan and then like kind of check, like, do we know that, do we know what we like, do we have, we, have we answered the right questions to make sure that we can um, follow that plan? What do we need to do? So, so Jeff, I appreciate what you're saying uh, to get into some substance besides what she's been working on, but I think I need to hear from all three officers to coordinate because we haven't been able to meet together to understand what each other have done and so we're not going to be talking from a very informed position if we don't hear all of our positions first as to what our work is. And then that will help us piece back together how they how we coordinate those. So, so you, so you want to go through the, the four content agenda items and then go back through them again to kind of... Well, I want to see what we pick out of those that that is most coherent and helps us guide us through how we're going to work together. I, yeah, I, I don't want to like step on your toes too much here, but um, I, I don't think you need to talk about the content of the revisions to talk about Lynn's timeline, but but I'm going to shut up now because it's not <laughs> my meeting, but, but, but I am going to keep doing this where like, because I okay. want you guys to actually start making progress on the, the, uh, the, um, the goal, like, like, like to actually like be, be making forward progress. So like Lynn just proposed a plan to actually execute on that plan. You have a lot more work to do. I agree. I agree. So, so um, if I can understand from Guy what his summary work is, then that introduces Lori to hit her understanding and my understanding. So um, if we can do it, we will come back to each of the statements and try and create substance from those statements. So Guy, can you provide? Well, are we, um, and I'm trying to, unfortunately I didn't pull up the agenda before I'm, so okay. I'm, trying, I'm looking for our agenda. So uh, let me, let me put a, a link. 
It's, it's in the email I sent out, but uh, um, I can I can. Stick uh, I'm sorry, Jeff. I didn't. Um. Anyways, so is it my part on the clumping that I did? Yeah, the, it's the clumps. Okay, so I went through uh, the 2001 plan, and I tried to pull out those things that we needed to um, to revisit. Uh, so I, I left out a number of things that I th thought were not pertinent that that were really, you know, kind of very dis descriptive and which which we may want to do at some point, you know, the history thing. Actually, I'm going to work a little bit with a historian on the history piece, uh, kind of review some other descriptive things of Nesco and the geology of Nesco and those kinds of things. I just left those in the, the old plan. Not that, again, not that we won't decide later, that we want to have some descriptive kinds of things in there. Uh, but I pulled out things that I thought, you know, in terms of sections, which I could start seeing sections of our future plan and pulled things into those sections and what we I call clumps. <laughs> so I formed, I can't remember how many clumps, Lynn probably knows. Um, and uh, I sent those to Lynn to help uh, with her looking at kind of a table of contents of what our plan might might be. So I I did that and uh uh you know I think hopefully it'll be helpful. So it's in a sense pulling out the meat of the old plan, putting those things I'm I know I'm mixing metaphors here from clumps to meat, but pulling out the things that I think are going to be essential to our as we move forward in our in our new plan. And then trying to link those things together that made sense, and then gave pass it on to Lynn for her Lynn to start thinking about what a table of contents might look like uh, with those things. So that's what I did. One of the things I did since our last meeting. And I just want to say, I'm assuming you all got the table of contents I sent out. No. No. So. So I sent, um, let me give you the date of the email. I sent it by email um, to RAN. And um, let me just find it here. It was sent on January 28th to uh, RAN and Jeff for distribution. Did you get it, Jeff? Graph, table of context. Okay, I guess I did get it. Good. Oh, good. I'm not I'm not crowding the issue here. I just wanted to be sure you have it. And we can we can certainly send it out to all of you. And, and that was my intention that it would have gone to all. And Jeff, I have the agenda, by the way. What did you say, Guy? I have the agenda. He, he hasn't put it in the chat yet, but oh. I got the agenda. <clears throat> oh, oh, I, I I just realized I was muted. I don't think I did get the uh, the uh, um, table of contents from Lynn. So okay, I'm gonna re I'm gonna resend it right now. No, no, um, you don't have to. I'm just forwarding it to the perfect. Uh, but your committee roster. Well, I have to do it individually. Oh, oh that's right. Okay, <laughs> thank you. And I'm we're in a sure. we're technically we're in a meeting. Yeah, right? yeah, man, you can send it to everybody. And, and I, I I did get it. I just I just found it. Um, okay, great, go. great. Okay, thank you. And I'm going to keep myself on mute because they're doing construction on the floor below me and it's really <laughs> overbearing. So um, just <clears throat> forgive me that, but okay, good. Just wanted to... Con All right, so that's good. So I think one of the things that I have to admit my confusion about is if I'm supposed to distribute 
or if Jeff is supposed to distribute, if they if he gets it from one person, are are you distributing it or am I distributing it? So I think if so so, so if someone is sending an email to me and you with the intent that that they're not they, they don't want to send emails to directly to to the whole group directly um please please call out in your subject line that you want it to be redistributed cuz cuz um yeah i i i don't think i even opened this email cuz i was probably really busy that day um i think i think i was super busy that week because that was the week where we had the um, yeah, I was just, I was just very very busy that week. So so okay. apologies I didn't I didn't open the email, um and it, and it and I and I don't know that I would have realized that I needed to send it to everyone else, um, but if 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 you ask for it to be sent to everyone else, um I will do that. Also, everyone like the like it's a really easy trick. You can send an email to everyone. Just use BCC so that it doesn't turn into an email thread where people are talking to each other. So so. Um, okay. So, so everyone should feel fine if you've got something that everyone needs to see, like send it to everyone. Use BCC, like if, if you know how to do that. And, uh -huh. then, and, then, yeah. and then don't discuss it in email, but but then everyone has it, so. Great, okay, another good tool. All right, so we got what Guy has done. We have this timeline, which is very helpful from Lynn. Uh, Grant, can, can we just pause just for a minute and Sure. And maybe introduce everybody who's on the on the call here. Okay. Well, we have the committee members. We have the board chair, we have the board vice chair, and we have Nancy Bandel. Maybe um, she could introduce herself. Maybe not. Maybe not everybody knows who Nancy is. <laughs> okay. For the record, I just think we, even for the record, we should. And for the minutes, we should indicate who's present and who's, I mean, who's here as guests. So. Okay. All right. Hi, well, Nancy Vandell, good to see you all. Thank you, Nancy. Chair of the bylaws, member of the CAC. Thank you. She's <laughs> not being real forthcoming here. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for correcting me, Guy. <laughs> Is there any chance the rest of us could get a copy of the draft? Uh, <clears throat> done. Oh, I've said it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Okay. So Tom, Tom's here. Yeah, I'm here. Yes, Tom is here. <laughs> Introduce yourself, Tom, and we can make sure you're on the minutes. Okay. Tom Sipe. I'm the editor of uh, the bylaws committee. Thank you. You have somebody, Alexander Clark. I see. I'm, uh, Alex Clark. I'm the vice chair of the NCAC, and I am happy to be here. Alexander, I don't think I've ever seen Alexander before. That's my <laughs> long form name. Yes, I guess Mark, go ahead. Yeah, I'm I'm Mark Everett. I'm the chair of the NCAC, and yeah. I'll have to I'll have to leave probably a little after three for an, another board meeting. So, oh, yeah, yeah. okay. All right, Grant. Sorry for the interruption. I think okay. you know, look at what uh, the table of contents that. <laughs> and looking together and thinking about our conversation with Tom and looking at what the bylaws committee did, um, I can see the table of contents starting to form that kind of spreadsheet or, or matrix um, that Tom did for the bylaws, uh, you know, and maybe that's starting to form the background. I mean, at least how that's how I looked at it. Uh, just quickly here, uh, maybe others have some thoughts. I know that <clears throat> I should say that Nancy is uh, responsible for organizing it. I just executed. <laughs> um, Nancy probably didn't get a copy of the what Lynn did. Uh, no. Maybe okay. Rand, you could send Nancy a quick. And, and and I don't know if Tom got it either. I did not. And Mark, and thank Alex. you. Okay, now I got to go find it again here. Well, 
I drew an email. And then I could actually Yeah, I think I've, who did I leave out? Got it to Alex, Mark, Nancy, and Tom. So I think that's everybody. Wow. Okay, so do you want to carry on further in that observation guy, or can I get to Lori and uh, our work well, that we've done to date? Or Well, yeah, I think we need to, talk a little bit about it. so lynn is that i mean are you you know you were part of that just that presentation that tom did last time as you look at the table of contents as we start is is, is that some way in which you think it, we would use it or so a couple of things and again i apologize because i i was thinking that i need to get things to we're all being very careful with our distribution. And so I think in, in my caution, I was like, okay, I'm going to give it to the chair and I'm going to give it to the administrator. And so I'm sorry I didn't get out in advance. And what I looked at when I was doing my draft, which is um, I'm going to look at it while I'm talking to you, but was looking at Tom's draft and also looking at the clumps that Guy sent me. And um Part of what I wanted to be sure that we accomplished, which I think is um, is is critical, is that we created a usable document, um, not a shelf document, not a technical paper, a usable document that people actually might, um, you know, feel like they have both intellectual access to it and also physical access to it. That it was not. Um, cumbersome in, in any way. And that's, it's always hard to do with land use planning. But what I did is look at their two documents. And then with, with my having been involved in the previous drafts of the community plan, and also just having worked across land use stuff with different groups of people over the years, um, trying to think about an outline that was as simple as possible. And it's harder to be simple in land use than it is to be technical. Um, and, but, but to really make glaring to people, um, what is, what have we done that changes the last plan and to be very upfront about that. Um, and that would be anyone who read the executive summary would know exactly what's gone, what's added and what's different, um, that we would. Um, take a lot of the process discussion, which a lot of people care deeply about, but is not the substance of what we have to focus on for a community plan. We have to do it right. I'm not, please don't misunderstand. But reading about process is an acquired taste. Um, and I think we have to be careful with burdening the document with process. And finally, to just think about the document using Tom's framework and, and the clumps, plus some new clumps and some different clumps, perhaps. Think about it, um, and this will not make people happy, but almost a PowerPoint mentality. There's a reason that PowerPoints evolved. And the reason is that you have to be able to get a lot of people through a lot of complexity to be able to navigate. And I don't want us to do a PowerPoint, don't misunderstand, but any document that is really clear can be turned into a PowerPoint with some ease if it's well written and structured properly. So. Those are kind of my guiding principles to start. And then I took the current plan and did a version of what I thought should go in the back, um, in the appendix, um, and how the, how the um, meat of the matter, the most technical part obviously is the land use planning part, the policies, the zoning ordinances, but to organize that differently than it currently was. And I think I did, I think I took a different approach even than Guy did. 
And I'm not saying my approach is the right approach. I'm saying as we come up with what we want to say, we have to think about where we say it so that my goal is for some anyone in NASCO in to be able to read this and get the basics out of it and to understand what's on the table. Um, yeah. Obviously, the technical language, there's kind of why do we do a community plan? And there's two parts of that. One is a big chunk of vision and kind of values. And the other part is zoning ordinances and the goals, talking about the specific goals. So what this outline does is kind of takes that approach. It's if there's an executive summary there, just as Tom outlined, there's a um, there's an introduction. Um, but okay. we, but we use some language like who is this plan for? Um, what's it going to do? How's that different from what it's done in the past? And oh, by the way, here's this land use planning stuff, which is very artful. And but but also we should assume, and I remind myself of this constantly, land use planning is now 50 years old in Oregon. And a lot of people have not lived in Oregon until the last 10 years. I mean, it's it's a the demographic of the state is changing. So that was my goal is to kind of clump it, clump it in that way. Um, I'm reluctant, I can't, you all have been involved in this for years now. I can't say without hearing from people where people's focus is right now and what they're going to find most interesting. I know what we have to do to comply with the standards for community plan. Um, but I wanted to kind of aggregate things in categories that are um, simple and clear. And we need to add a category, for example, for Senate Bill 406. Uh, we know that's something people are interested in. Um, and then I did do this kind of action plan with timelines at the end, the how section, which I think is really critical to it being used effectively. Um, and that was, I think in the in the copy you're looking at, my copy has lots of notes on top of it, but that was, that was the framework. Um, and I, my framework was driven by kind of the values I outline at the top and driven by what was in guys and what was in Tom's. Um, and probably the part I'm the, I'm the most open on is the technical part, the why, the land use why. Um, people tend to high ground on that at the expense of the program. They expect everyone is going to become a land use expert. And the data is that fewer and fewer people want to become land use experts. They want to talk about their issues. Um, and that's, I'm not saying that's what we do, but we, we have to find a bridge between technical land use detail and um, common understanding. So that's my brief summary and um, happy to answer any questions. All right, thank you, Lynn. Yeah. All right, I don't hear questions. Well, just a general comment of, um, and just taking a quick look, couple of quick looks through this. Uh, I mean, there's, I think in terms of all the overall objectives of what Lynn is saying about how this is going to be organized and and, and how we target it, I just think are, are really important. And uh, so I, for me, I'd like an opportunity to kind of go through this and think about what Lynn just said and and the organization of it. I mean, I think it's going to be, and we should probably... I'd say by you know the next meeting, get a, at least a draft of our table of contents down, um, and uh, you know so we we got something to start pinning things to. Uh, doesn't have to be the final, but I think it'd be a draft, and also agree to I think some of the general points that Lynn just made. Uh, so that's just a comment. Uh, I'm seeing this for the first time, so. Uh, if I may speak in your your meeting, by the way, please. Uh, the uh, it appears that you're going to serialize the process if you take it, everything in one particular in the, do the land use. Uh, if you lump everything together and try to do lockstep 
of the entire document. What I'm what I'm seeing here is that uh, splitting it into pieces and then going through this process for each piece will allow you to do more parallelism. Now, obviously, if one person is going to do it all parallelism, it doesn't help you a bit. But uh, given that we can all work on certain different parts of it, um, categorizing general areas and then taking each one of those in this very rigorous uh, process seems like it might have a better chance for getting done. And and that I think, Tom, I think you raise a really important point. And one of my questions was, because one of the things, and this is maybe for Guy, that this, so one thing I suggest in the document is to, to do a track changes version, um, <laughs> which is hard. And doing track changes is an art form that, um, a skill that I don't have. The value of track changes is it, uh, and the reason it's done so frequently is it increases trust dramatically because most people don't ever want to tell you they haven't read a document, but often they haven't. And so if there's track changes, it's clear to everyone what's in, what's out. So part of what I couldn't evaluate is, are we, are we interested in doing a track changes? If we are not going to do track changes, and Guy, you would know this, is I don't know how much Sarah expects us to adhere to the current compre you know, that we are doing an update. We are not doing a rewrite. We are not doing a new community plan. We are updating the community plan. And that's part of the structure of the land use system is it's not anticipated that, for, for example, the goals don't get hugely rewritten. The rules get written a lot. But part of what we have to be clear about is what we're doing. And if we're doing an update, the way the plan is currently written, there's a lot of updating to do. There's a lot of text editing to do. But I didn't know what this group had decided in terms of using. And I saw on yours, Guy, you'd like to reformat it, I think, and for a lot of valid reasons. The question is, we're gonna to have to do something that almost requires a track changes or at least a code of changes um, so that people can look at this and go, okay, I get it. You know, We've now got to have a significant housing policy for developing affordable housing, whatever it is. Um, so, so that's a, a mechanism. I don't know how we're gonna address it, but we have to bake it in. Um, and I, it's up to you all to decide how we do that. It seems um, to me. Yeah, uh, the way we approach this exact same problem in bylaws is that what we did was re rearrange things and clump things, uh, to use the technical term that uh, guy had. Uh, <laughs> we clumped things uh, and made a specific effort not to change anything. And then establish that as our baseline. From that baseline, then you can do a change. And that's it. And in fact, that's what we're doing. Uh, if you look at the uh, latest version draft of the uh, bylaws, you'll see that there are two sections which are redlined uh, where the changes have been made. So trying to move things around and track those changes is a nightmare. I have a lot of experience with that, and I don't want to do it again. Yeah. My thought. Yeah, and my thought here, um, I think the principle of, of 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 informing people how we have gone from the plan of two thousand one to the current plan and what's different is is an important one. And I agree about trust, and, and we're not and we're not rewriting the plan. So I think that because track changes would be a nightmare absolute nightmare with this um and i think lynn as you said it's the, the 2001 plan nothing about the folks that wrote it but it's th th there's it kind of jumps around a lot uh that's why when i pull clumps together i kind of kind of combine some things um and uh so much of the plan is is just descriptive. There's a couple of kind of major things. There's a huge descriptive 
piece to the 2001 plan. I think we're going to keep a lot of that. We may reduce it a little bit, edit it a little bit. I don't think people were interested necessarily if we added, you know, we learned more about the basalt and how it was formed here. That's my big thing. Uh, if you put that in, no one's going to care about the track changes. I think those things will be in the appendices. The history, I think, is going to move to the appendices. Uh, I think the where we could, when we talk about our vision and what issues and concerns are most important to people today, I think there might be a way in which we, because we're going to look back at 2001 and say, here's what people said then. Here's what people are saying now. We'll have to figure out a way to, to do that. I think it, that's an important piece that we don't want to lose. As Lynn said, you know, the, I mean, the, things have changed in 24 or five years. Actually, those surveys and things were done in 98, 99. So um, we'll have to make sure we capture that. Uh, and the other thing in which we're going to come up in the next part of the agenda, which I think is important to address, and it's also to me for the trust thing, is I pulled out all the recommendations that were in 2000, the 2001 plan. And they're not, some are labeled recommendations, some are labeled policy changes, some are aspirational kinds of things. They're a little bit all over the map in terms of labeling. But I think though we have to show people that here's what the committee and the community recommended ultimately in 2001, here's what happened to those things. And if, and if they, do we, if they haven't been, I'll pick out the, the one everybody picks out. It's kind of like Trump's 30,000 square foot apartment. The one for Neskowin is skinny streets. Everybody's going to put the skinny streets. So, uh, that was a recommendation out of 2001. We heard from Sarah that was not uh, adopted by the county. And as we discovered back, I don't know, five, six years ago, the CAC tried to get something done in terms of whatever. And we were told that we didn't have skinny streets uh, by Public Works. So I think that's important to capture the recommendations made, changes that were made, which ones weren't complete completed which ones we and th those and others that we want to continue with or make new recommendations so i think there's a way without track oh there's, there's a way to do it without track changes i um and again i think the it to your point tom that the thinking in the draft table of contents that i did was that each of those categories under you know, there's kind of land use planning and then there's the policies and recommendations. And part of what I was thinking is if you took the, the um, you know, the current stuff and broke it into two Y sections with relevant portions of those two things in some manner, we could divide into groups that way. Um, that, 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 that effectively all the detail, like I think some, you know, I think the Senate Bill 406 stuff the consultants are going to say, and I, I may have the wrong Senate bill number, but whatever, the housing thing. The consultants are probably going to have a way that they want to say that. We're probably that or that is common usage or that they think will be helpful. I, I, you know, I'm hopeful they have something to say that ensures we are compliant but not befuddled. And right. so um I would expect them to bring some language forward for that not just to coach us along in writing language, but they ought to bring, here's some draft language, see how far you can adopt it. So that may help us segregate into different, to take the meat of the report or the plan and divide it up into, into chapters, if you will. But again, I'm not, there's no pride of authorship there. I just don't want people to not be able to get it. It's my goal. Right. Or to be fright, or to just ignore it because it's just oh my god, what are those people talking about? Um, which so okay, so I would ask at this point that Lori provide her um, 
update and then I'll provide a, a solicitive solicitation of feedback and um, see if that helps us understand the process regarding uh, feedback from the community. So Rand, it was yeah. before Lord speaks. Uh, can you send out the email I sent you and Jeff today? Then um, I didn't label it to be distributed, but it should. And it's uh, the document that I put together that has all the recommendations from 2001. So I'll I'll do that. You don't have to do it, Rand. Um, okay. So, so that document is in Pages for which only works on a Mac. Um, does everyone have a Mac? No, Tom doesn't have a Mac. You want, um, to, want me to save it in Word? So, so I, I've already converted it to Google Docs, so I will include a link okay. to the Google Doc. Um, okay. So. Okay. All right. So, um, the as what I interpreted the um, assignment for Ryan and I was to talk about or to start thinking about how we were going to structure community input. Um, and I actually came up in many ways with a similar timeline as Lynn, as far as being practical. Um, I was looking at it in terms of, we have four general meetings, general membership meetings of the NCAC um, between now and Thanksgiving. We've got February, April, June, and August. Actually, I guess we have five, but I was thinking February, we're not very organized for. So in essence, for being really practical about presentations at a general meeting, we have April, June, August, and October. And we have the meeting next week as kind of just an introduction of our committee to the NCAC general meeting. Um, I think that people are physically present in Nesquin the most in June, July, and August. And those would be the most practical months to get in-person and hybrid meetings going. Um, and that we should um, really think about uh, how many we are gonna have and how often we would have them and what other um, community things are happening in the summer and avoid double booking, uh, like for instance, not having it on the golf tournament weekend or not having it on the 4th of July. If we start taking those weekends out, we're gonna have um, you know, some time constrictions and maybe people think we should double book. That's a whole different discussion. Um, and I agree with Lynn that November and December are hard months to get things done. So in an ideal world, I'd like to see us get a plan that's been discussed and reviewed and voted on by the community by October. So November and December are the months that we would be able to submit it to the county and do final revisions and things. Um, if we're, as far as how we're gonna uh, communicate with um, the community, I would love to see us be able to do some kind of a general polling at every NCAC general meeting, that would give us five times to get community input of people that are by definition interested in the community because they've attended the meeting. It would not be any kind of statistical survey that we needed to quantify or anything, but it would give people a sense that their opinion was gonna be asked for on a regular basis if they pay attention. Um, and then I think that we should send at least one uh, email uh, solicitation of feedback and hopefully a written one so that depending on how you related to information, you could respond in the way that you most were addressed. Um, I would love to see the informational meetings happen in in July, if we possibly could, July and August, if we needed to. In September, I'd like to discuss the conclusions from the July meetings and the hybrid meeting that people could actually participate in. And then in October, vote on the community plan. Um, I, I 
am very concerned that we're realistic about these surveys and solicitations of information that are separate from the community meetings because I want them to be, um, they've been questioned so much in the past by different, both committee members and other members of the public that I want us to be realistic about what we can produce and what information that we want back from them. And so I'm hoping that those pieces of, when we solicit information, that it relates directly to what's on Lynn's table of contents, what's in Guy's information about revisions, whatever it is, but that there's a specific reason why we're asking for the opinion. Um, and then for the first, the first poll that we might do at the general meeting in February, I was hoping that we would be authorized by the committee to pick some of the questions that um, Sarah suggested that other communities have used that have already been vetted by the county as being appropriate questions to ask, that we could maybe pick five of those and, and pull them during the at the end of the general meeting as a new business. Um, and um, just to get people really like uh, engaged that they are gonna be asked questions, like they are gonna be have a chance to participate. Mm -hmm. Lori, one of the things, and again, going back over the current well, plan. Um, well, I don't know if I'm still on the meeting or not. So, so much was. Um, I, don't know, but I think that Rand might be off the meeting. Um, Rand's off the meeting. We're in the same room. Rand, could you. And because could, he had to close because of um, conflict on the Zoom, he's lost to, contact. To Let's let's have Rand. Does pop anyone back have in, a but, comment um, about what I said? Yeah, I, I get Rand. Is it Rand coming back in, or is he? Well, well, as long as Lori's talking, maybe Rand should just come yeah. sit sit next to Lori and you. Oh, can... you guys are in the same place. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, um, so, you know that when the previous committee, when they tried to kind of ascertain what what the vision of the of the community was moving forward. And then they took all those kind of the survey results and things that they had, and they put together these vision statements for Nesquan. Here's what people, how people see us now. Here's how they see us in the future. And then every recommendation that they made, and I didn't, in the document that you're going to get, or you just got from Jeff, uh, when I pulled those recommendations out, what I didn't pull with each of those recommendations was what the committee said about each one. This recommendation meets vision number three, number seven, number eight, number nine. You know, they they listed all out. So they tied every recommendation to a vision that is was expressed by the community. Um so it kind of made me think when I was going through Lori that would there, I mean, I mean, maybe it's just me, but I would be interested in how our vision has changed. And the only way that we could kind of figure that out is to kind of use some of the similar survey questions. You know, when that one survey question is rank the things that are most important to you, and they had about like 10, 15 things, uh, if there was a way to duplicate that, you know, so we could say, boy, in 1999, this is how people responded 2024 this is how people responded um that was just a thought when i was going through that as you were thinking of it. the other thing that we had uh when we did uh a coastal hazard overlay zone and made changes to the uh the county comp plan and our ordinances we took advantage of the ca of the uh, nca meetings so we piggybacked on the uh, Labor Day and on the Memorial Day meetings, the the thing that's different about those meetings now is that there's kind of parties or golf. <laughs> Everybody go down to the golf clubhouse for whatever, whatever. And we didn't have that. I mean, so people stuck around or 
or we did it before from three to four. We, you know, we, we piggyback on them. Again, that was just something we were able to do, something you may want to think about as we, when we can get the community together. As you know, those are pretty well attended. Um, and everybody with ties to, to Nesquin. So, yeah, that's my thoughts of being, is, is there a way we can duplicate some of that to match up with the previous plan in terms of vision and how that would look, okay? That seems totally possible. Okay, so the um, mine somewhat dovetails with Lori's thing. Uh, besides the polling questions on a February 10th meeting, I have determined sections of questions to do with qualitative and quantitative results. So rather than throwing, you know, 72 questions from the old survey away at people, I think we could determine uh, from the the clumps and the table of contents what we feel are uh, required areas that we need to ask questions about to update the plan. So we would determine sections of questions and then would use uh, those questions to uh, answer from the community what in that section of maybe two or three of the uh, state planning goals together, how people feel about those issues and include in that uh, serve that solicitation of inquiry, uh, what part of the community plan you're talking about right there. So they would have the questions pertaining to the state goals, the sections in the community plan having to do with the revisions proposed, and they would have the informational town hall all there. So they could deal with the question, the pertinence of those issues, the current state of that, potentially the revisions, all in that. So we'd give them, say, two weeks between the meetings to review that particular group of questions pertaining to specific state planning goals, have all the relevant information right there for them to read and understand so that when they answer the question, they've been informed about it. If we can do that through about six meetings, we should be able to handle most of the highly relevant revisions and inform those people as they go along how, what the current understanding is and what the relevant information is pertaining to their answer. Then we, um, So that would be kind of a, a way of not having it be overwhelming, have it be informative as well as just asking a question. And the results should be pretty directed by an informed audience as to what their response is. I think one of the things that we'll have to do, decide in, in kind of relation to Lynn's table of contents. If you look at the old plan, kind of went through things kind of a bit scattered, but then they they took this obligation to talk about each of the of the state land use goals. And they just put like a sentence or two, you know, they, a couple, you know, they kind of like they did they they addressed them very briefly as required. Um I don't think we organize our plan around the statewide goals. I do think there are things that are going to come out of our plan in terms of recommendations we make or um, mostly on recommendations that are going to pertain to certain statewide goals. Um, and, you know, we can, I think we can include that you know, let's say goal one, you know, uh, community participation. Uh, and we can talk, you know, we can talk about that, but I don't, I guess 
right now, I'm not thinking that we would organize our plan, goal one, goal two, goal three, and then try to stuff everything in those in those underneath those goals that might pertain to that, including recommendations or whatever. At least now that's that's not what I'm thinking, especially when you look at the old plan, how they did it. It was kind of strange. It's almost like, oh, and here's a section we're gonna put in just to say we made a comment on each statewide goal. I think there's there's meat to some of those goals for us, M E A T. And I think the, those and when we come to those areas to point people towards those uh town halls and that would be helpful. Um, not all of them, but, but well, we didn't, guess, we, yeah, we didn't do town halls on every goal either. So, right. So I'm not saying you go one through 18 or something. I'm saying when you have identified the sections in the text of the community plan that you want to revise and, uh, bring that forward, that you provide that change how it relates to the state planning goal, which I assume it probably does since that most of the recommendations and land use laws based on the goals, I assume there, there is a relationship to the state goals, but you would do that selectively based on what has been pointed out in the clumping as to what is most important, what revisions are critical. And so when that person goes to that, to address questions pertaining to that area and the revisions that they have the section that they can read so they understand what's being revised. And if it relates to a state planning goal, that ITH is there so that they can, they may have no idea what the state planning goals are. So you shouldn't have to go look that up. Seems reasonable to have an explanation of it and how it relates to NASCO and right there. Yeah. I don't think it's one, it's not sequential one through 18 has yeah. more to do with your clumping process yeah. and the table of contents as to what's most okay. relevant. Okay. So one question I have is for the, um, for the process, when we have the community, do we, I think we talked about this before. I can't remember what the answer was. Do we have a list of the email addresses of the people who've attended throughout the last year's? This, I'm assuming the community, the NCAC has an email list of its membership. Yeah, we do. Okay. And so to me, the thing that would be just really fast, simple, and easy, uh, and an upgrade to what we did before, is to, when people come to the meetings, get their email okay. and shoot them a survey monkey. Um, and, and, and engage them electronically so that if they miss the third meeting, they're still in the loop and their input is taken. I mean, it's so easy now to get people's information, not to get their information, but to get them something they can respond to. I think SurveyMonkey is free and it just seems like a, a, a better way to get busy people in the 21st century engaged in something that the survival of which very much depends in people getting engaged in it. Because mm -hmm. as much as even we explain land use to people, a lot of people's first reaction to some of it is to just bring a lawsuit. And right. I, you know, I mean, that's easier. If, you, if, if you've got enough money, that's what you do, is you just say, oh, to hell with it. I don't care what, or, you know. So, so even if the, for example, I, their goal five be a perfect one. Goal five says lots of wonderful things. How many of those are in the nitty gritty of the regulatory of the statutes, the Oregon revised statutes and the litigation over the last 50 years? A lot. How many of those have definitions that the normal person would not understand because 50 years of litigation and, and legislation has molded them differently? And to me, the more quantitative we can be, not that I, I'm not saying go full quant, but to more, the more we can say, here's all these people, and this person signed in as a renter, and they're here three weeks out of the year, and and they're blah, 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 but they really care passionately because the only access they have to the Oregon coast for their family is Nesco in, because whatever, fill in the blank. It's, you know, they have a diabetic child, and we still have a regional hospital. There are a lot of reasons people come to Nesco in. So 
to me, if we have an email list and then we build it through this process, we have an ongoing list of people who are interested and who we can engage in free and easily and in a very 21st century way. So I, I want to, so, uh, with your indulgence, Rand, in, interrogate that a little bit since this is this is kind of on on my, in my my court. Um, and to just clarify what you're you're proposing to to send out a survey monkey, although we'd probably do a Google form. Um, like like it, it sounds like you're proposing like frequent ones, like like to have kind of an email series about to ask people questions what uh, we can do it any number of ways i know you know the golf course has an email we have a the golf course has an email list of its membership the community mm -hmm. the community what's it called not the ncac but the nca they have an email list yeah and we do too and you do and yeah. so to me it's like it's a small community trying to do great things and what's the fast and and the nesco in north where i live they have an email list for the homeowners association um, and so I'm just saying it's a small step. It's not a real poll, but it's 21st century and it's built for survival and success because there is no better way to get a hold of people fast and to get their attention and to allow them not to have to physically go somewhere. It's, it's, it's useful so, in that way. So just a thought. So are you proposing that instead of having like conducting polls at meetings that we send a yeah. questionnaire and, and do it like lightweight and quick, but like don't don't agonize it over for for months, but do it do it soon to 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 our email list. That that's what you're proposing. Yeah. And to build that e, e to build a community email list for community use. Like um so actually that was my intention in the comments that I made was that we would do multiple ways of outreach. One of them would be direct emails as often as we can organize them in a productive way and a professional way that got us the information that actually was needed and wasn't just wasting people's time. Doing polls at general meetings so that people were immediately involved if they chose to attend something potentially doing a physical mailing because there might be some people that we miss in emails because they have junk filters put on or whatever. <laughs> and in-person and hybrid meetings. I really, I feel strongly that all of those are really appropriate. And um, also that there's four of us on this committee and Jeff who's overwhelmed with things to do and so I think we need to be practical about what we actually can do in a high quality way. But I totally agree. We should use every mailing list that we have and ask for as many possible um, opinions as we can get. And have a way to actually process that information mm -hmm. so that it's not asked and ignored. I guess that's the other accountability that I want to make sure that when we talk about all of these really idealistic things about how many people we're going to involve and what we're going to do, that when we get the information that we actually can show people that we paid attention to them and that we didn't, we weren't waste. I don't want to waste people's time. I want people to know that what we're asking them to do is important and it's um, being taken account of. I agree. I agree. I do think it's very hard for an organization our size or even any of the organizations in NESCO in to do parallel public communication efforts. I mean, I think um, it's just very hard these days to keep track of people. Um, and and I don't know that if that's because Oregon moved to vote by mail, vote by mail years ago and got people very sophisticated about okay here's my ballot I got to vote I got to mail I got to sign I got you know we're a old Oregon is facile with those kinds of processes that are very consistent and and very well managed. It's hard for me to think of us managing both a written mailing list. Uh, 
an email. I mean, if I think we, I think we need some kind of communication for people who are not electronically savvy, because there are those people, and and you know we need to hear from them. But to the extent that we can base it electronically on email, to the extent that we can use tools that like SurveyMonkey that aggregate information quickly, thoroughly, and accurately, it improves the caliber of our product. I believe we have those tools that will do the aggregation and such. Then it's the question of data analysis and if we have the expertise to do that or if that's just uh, because the questions that we have, if that's clear, clear cut or not. So, yeah, probably the biggest gap is people who don't aren't really savvy about using electronic devices. Um, I don't know, I'd leave it to Jeff. I mean, I think obviously the message is we want to get as much feedback as possible and to use all the tools available, SurveyMonkey, other kinds of things are great tools. Um, I'm here thinking that, uh, and I guess I'm I'm thinking of how we organize the plan. And going back to Lynn's statement is that we we've, we've got to show people the trust in that, and we've got to build off of the past plan. The past plan assessed in whatever way they did. And I got to go back and look at the appendices to see what they put in there in terms of tools. But they they put together a vision for Nescoin, what the people in Nescoin believed what, what their vision was, and they put together a statement of values for Nescoin, what their values were. I think we owe it to the community to also say what our vision is of Nescoin and values. Uh, I could see in our um, the body of our plan that. In some way, we show people the changes that have occurred in 25 years. Um, and we've got to assess as many people as possible to get those two things. Yeah. And again, as, as the committee did in, in the late 90s, 2000, they used those two things to then make recommendations and changes moving forward. Um, and I think before we ever start on the recommendation side, and again, you all got a copy of the recommendations they made back then, I will, I'm committed to going back and seeing which of those have been um, taken care of. There was a lot of issues around development erosion and storm run, you know, runoff and things like that that have been addressed by the county since, and we can tell people that. Um, so, yeah, Jeff, I mean, you know, whatever tools we have, and I don't know if reaching out to the NCA, especially the NCA, and if there a way to combine without duplicating the email list. Um, um, if, if they're willing to share their email with this list with us, I'm sure we could um, figure out a way. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure they will. And, and I vice versa. We have to offer them, we have to be clear you know, that people are so suspicious these days. I I long for the time in Oregon where people are just like, let's let's get this done. But nonetheless, we have to be clear with the C the NCA. Yeah. Those people know we're not going to share the list. We're not going to sell it to, you know, yeah, yeah. Comcast or something. It's it's very discreetly used only for the benefit of the community plan. And if we don't have a broader list, it jeopardizes our ability to do our work. And I think if we give them some certainty of that, they'll, they, I can't imagine, I mean, we'll just have to ask them and see. Um, I'd like to make a comment about what Kai, Guy said about the values and the vision. I think those are a really essential part of the plan. Um, I, I, I think we need to remember that we're revising the plan. We're not right. starting from scratch. 
Right. And so however we address those, I think we can present them that these are the visions and the goals that are in our plan. And we're going to assume that they are um, valid because people have been moving here and living here ever since we put these on, out there. And if we need to discuss them, provide a way for people to um, ask for that. But I don't think that we as a committee should start changing the vision and the goals because those oh, no. are the plan. Think, yeah, no, and we don't have the. It, yeah. it could extend the process a year, depending <laughs> on how far we go into vision statements and goal statements. So, Lori, uh, what you what you're suggesting? But I'm not saying that some of those things can't aren't can't be revised, but I'm just I'm very hesitant to start fresh, like. We're revising okay. the plan. We're not creating a new one. So it's, you're suggesting, and I and I would be actually nervous in moving forward with the past vision and value statements without giving people an opportunity to have input into what may be different. And there are statements in there uh, that have certainly come up in discussions about STRs and other kinds of things in this community. Um, I mean, the community has changed in 25 years. And I, I hear you in saying, you know, let's move forward and if people object, I guess we'll have to revisit it. But I think if we don't give people an opportunity to at least comment and have input into the vision and values of today, that, that might be a problem. I guess you walk a tightrope there of saying, here's what the, com uh, the community plan from 20 years ago was driven by, because everything refers back to the values. <clears throat> and how do you I don't think you want to rewrite those. I think if you're talking about revisions, you might be asking for, you might be suggesting some things that would bring it up to date. If it's just an open, well, what do you guys think of this? What do you want to change in here? I think that's definitely letting the dogs out here. I think you really need to, our responsibility is to be true to the plan, make revisions and to make constructive uh revisions that bring it up to date and then see how those fly. They can compare them side by side. But I don't think we want to just start wholesale opening up to everybody. What do you think of these values and what do you think we ought to change? I think that requires, that requires a qualitative and quantitative survey that they did 20 years ago with 120 people or something, not four to 800 people. So it's a bigger audience that's changed. I don't believe those values are that odd or different than they are now. There may be specific revisions such as removing single family and just having residences instead of single family residences. But uh, I think it's worth us going over those values and understanding what revisions you think wh where something is very apparent that it needs to be different when it's proposed i think you could get pushed back but it would have to hear that argument for any changes and that yeah, might yeah. require specific uh polling but i don't think we can really start over very much or else well, it's 2024 is the well, beginning. I'm not suggesting starting yeah. over, Grant, but I'm suggesting that we somehow have. I mean, if the if the recommendation of this committee is that the four of us rewrite or update or revise, edit, revise. If the four of us do that, the values and and vision of Nescowin, put it out there and see if we get pushback, and then respond you know, willy-nilly to the pushback. I think that's a that would be a first of all, I think it would be a 
speaking of trust issue, I think that would be a huge trust issue. Uh, I think we have to get some input from the community. It doesn't have to be redo, but we have to get something from the community before we revise those statements. And then we can point to it, you know, here, you know, we got your input. We didn't do this on our own secretly in a, you know, in a Zoom meeting or something. But uh, anyways, that's that's where I'm at, I guess, with it. Well, we need we need specific suggestions on this front. Yeah, I'll I'll try to. Well, let me think about that. For next well, time. Well, one of the ideas I had when I was looking at Tom's um, table of contents outline and guys uh, clumps is, you know, and Tom, I don't. I think you're still with us, but you can duck if you want to. Um, it seems I'm to still here. You're saying, okay, so so I can see you duck if you duck. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> but what I'm suggesting is, it would be so great in my mind. It's this is February, to get an aggregate document that that combines the things that have been put on the table so far in some way. The fact that we do want to show changes, but not do a track change. The fact that we do want to push some things to the back or focus on some more contemporary things, et cetera, et cetera. And then to give each of us that aggregated document in double spaced form, you know, um, to, to, and then, Everyone take that document and don't text at it. Don't correct, you know, dangling participles, but kind of put in their highest priorities for making that document a better document. And maybe we don't even do that till after the first community meeting. But if the, if the four of us could put together something that we could get our arms around, even if at this point it's a hundred pages long and double spaced and wide margins or whatever the electronic equipment equivalent of that is. And people could put down in writing what they're most concerned about. You know, my concern is clarity and access. Um, other people have other concerns. Then the four of us could get together, hopefully five of us, and more people who wanted, you know, not a whole lot more, but, you know, obviously Jeff, and, and say, okay, here's something we can put on the table. And Laura, your comment that we want people responding to specific things. We don't want to, you know, um, I would like to have a bowling alley here, right? I mean, cause like, not that there couldn't be a bowling alley, but it would be a lot of work to find a bowling alley location. But, but then we could put together something that was streetable, give it to people, um, or give them a high level version of it. Don't get them in the weeds, lost in the weeds either. We'd be rolling. Because I think it, when we have some kind of mound of clay that we're trying to sculpt into this, all of us will do better because we can say, you know what, I just feel really strongly about this section or that section. I don't think we should write the housing thing till Sarah gets her consultants on board. But but we could take a stab at doing what Laura, what you suggest, Lori, which is update it, um, guide what you've suggested, which is, you know, it's a different group of people we're dealing with. I mean, I have to tell you, many of my neighbors are now from the East Coast in California in Nesco Inn, right? They're people who have moved in in the last five years. They have never heard of land use planning. They're excited that we have a community plan. They like what's going on in Nesco Inn in many respects. But would that help us move forward is to get some blob out there that we come convene on a Saturday afternoon in Nesco Inn and we work on it and edit it and correct it and sculpt it into something that is an update and has the elements guys discuss and has the clarity that Tom keeps driving us towards. That seems to me it would be a useful step. And if we get if we bog down in a discussion of geologic hazards or something else, um, I mean, we, you know, I can go full on land use nerd with the best of them. But but <laughs> that'll 
you know, we'll kick ourselves in, in the fanny and keep going. But that might be a good way to make this conversation concrete and tangible and on paper or the electronic equivalent to move us forward. Just a thought. Yeah, we want to avoid, um, and I'm giving Tom a little chance before he talks, but we want to avoid, um, you know, a group of 200 editing the document. Um, so whatever we do to revise this document, we need to somehow come up with a plan to get some initial feedback on re revisions from the community in general. Our committee needs to write those things in. Mm -hmm. uh, we're always going to get somebody's going to at a meeting say, well, I like, I used the word them instead of then, or, you know, whatever, whatever <laughs> we want. To, we, that's not what we're going to allow. Um, and uh, so whatever that balance is, um, yes, it's revision. Yes, we need some kind of feedback from the community. We got to figure out how to get that. And yes, we want to avoid public editing of the document. You are not going to avoid pedants. You will get them. Doesn't, <laughs> no matter how much pedantry, in case you're not familiar with the name, is where, where you nitpick everything with words. And yeah, you're not going to avoid those. But I I agree with your, your statement. There should be one custodian of the actual text. Yeah. And once and it's submitted, we can always say that we can say to somebody who wants to nitpick a word that they can go to the planning commission when this is being presented. <laughs> and they can argue with the planning commission that this word should be changed. We'll see how that goes. Okay. So <laughs> I, I think it sounds like the same homework that we got in the first meeting go back and revise a whole document yourself with your observations and then bring it to a meeting. We've, we've proposed that since the first meeting, been proposed again. I, Maybe well, we can refine it a little so, bit. Yeah. Pardon me? I, I mean, I think we, we've progressed beyond, we have three documents on the table now. We have, Tom, we have Tom's outline, we have my table of contents and we have Guy's suggestions. I pinged Sarah this morning because I have not received a hard copy. I went to a different FedEx and tried to download it. It's something wrong with my computer. It is my fault. And But if I had a hard copy right now, I would start write, writing it just because um, I always like to work from something that's concrete to move forward. Um, but I don't... You know, Tom, I really look to you. I don't know if you see something or if you would be happy, if you would be willing to evaluate the table of contents I did, Guy's piece and your piece, and the 20, 2000, is it 21, 2001 was the last version? Yeah. Well, it was approved in 2001. Yeah. And say, okay, folks, we're amending this document. We're informing it with the current, not the past. And and, you know, in the old days, we would cut and paste it to death and put together a new document that would be a starting point. And we'd Xerox it and hand it to everyone and say, have at it. Um, but if you would be willing, I don't know if you'd be willing to kind of bring together what's already out there into some usable format. And then we can give to everyone a copy of that and say, you know, take your best shot. And then convene in person with technology and maybe someone from the county and maybe these consultants. The housing part's going to be yes, Tom, is going to be hard, and we could move it forward. Well, I can, you, I can, I'll agree to for to to do a mapping. Uh, I can try to do an actual example document from that. Uh, just depends on how busy Nancy keeps me. So I did a mapping of the original plan to the table of contents. I took okay. the t every page of the table of the last plan 
and I took the page numbers of where it would fit in the new table of contents. So, and I'd be happy to share that and, oh, and work that, with that you help. on that. That it help. Um, it's not as sophisticated as what you do, and it's not as good as what you do. So you have to set those low expectations and be thrilled with what I send you. I I, I guarantee that I'll be thrilled. <laughs> Well, one thing I, I'm going to suggest we add, and, and I know, Lynn, you didn't have this, is, is uh, you know, I took it on to pull out all the recommendations made in 2000 that were in the 2001 plan. And I've committed for the next time to go through current county comp plan and all the ordinances to see which of those have been addressed. Oh, and that, I do, think we, I do yeah. think we owe it to great the community to say here are all the recommend you know and maybe it's in the appendix appendices or not i don't know where we'll think about it but to say here are the recommendations that were made then here's the things that have changed as a result of those recommendations here are the things that are still on the table if we want to address them uh so i'll do that uh for next time i i think that the vision and value statement and let's take you know the suggestion that we go um we have a shot and maybe there's maybe a, a couple folks could take and come up with some revision of the current uh values and vision statement and float it to us and and maybe what we do and, and think about how we would get feedback on that. Um, you know, that's a section, a standalone section in a way. I mean, it will influence the rest of the document. Um, but I think it will be uh, <clears throat> important that we start working on that revision. We could start specifically on that. The other thing I think is that could be done and this comes out of the, all the recommendations and the old plan is, is to group, and I don't know how this fits within our outline, uh, our table of contents, but clearly there are some things and changes that are there that relate to certain land use, the state land use goals. And maybe we need to go through and say, okay, this particular recommendation or this whatever we want to do moving forward is going to relate to a particular land use goal. And then when we get to like our, anything dealing with our shoreline, beaches and dunes, what is that, 19? I shouldn't know these by heart. Um, you know, some of our uh, estuary zones and things like that. I mean, uh, the committee back in the first plan made a huge commitment to saying they wanted to protect our natural resources, protect the beach, protect the wetlands, protect the estuary. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe there's, I don't know if we're going to have recommendations moving forward. I think some of the things, just take as an example, what RAN and Cameron and the NCA, I don't know who's all involved, but providing access to the beach, you know, with these, um, you know, uh, trying to keep these beach access things open and maybe we uh, commit ourselves to access to the beach for all people, disabled people, whatever, elderly, whatever. And that's a that's a that's that's part of our goals that we have. And that's part of that'll fit within the statewide goal as well. Um, I don't know. I mean, that was just an example of something, but, um, I, but I think we got to, we got to get, we can't keep it in general. I think let's all, let's look at vision and values. And Rand, if you want to assign like two people to work on, I'll come back with a draft. I'll work on checking all the recommendations that were made and see if they've been implemented. I sent you all, you got all copy of those recommendations now. I can tell you some of them have been implemented. Um, and uh, Jeff, if you could maybe contact the NCA folks and see, you know, what it would be a joint sharing of our email list and, and tell them why. And as Lynn said, promise them that you won't 
sell the list to Elon Musk or anybody? Grant, can you facilitate that since you are yeah. on the board? Yeah, I'm on the board, so I'll I'll ask that question. I of... could suggest that you ask them to send it out under their right. auspices. We, uh, we might get a bunch of duplicates if we do that. Well, that's, I was wondering if there was some kind of software that we could run the two lists together. No, oh, well, well, our, well, not what I was thinking. suggesting. Yeah. Not what I was suggesting. Well, Rather than them giving us custody of their email list, they would use our email list. Or they would, okay. You're, oh, you're saying that uh, they're duplicate. Depending on how the servers work, it may, it may delete duplicates. No, so I, I would be more aggressive. I would say, and I want to stop because I know Lori wants to say something. So I'm going to hold my thought because Lori, I've been watching the yellow hand and I take it seriously. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, two thoughts just from the things that have been rambling along since I put my hand up. I originally put my hand up to make sure that I got onto the table if we can get permission to do a poll at the meeting a week from now, if um, the committee thinks that it's appropriate to start asking for input from the community immediately, my idea about a poll for uh, the meeting on, I think it's the 10th, but whatever the next general meeting is, um, would be to use the questions that Sarah presented that other communities have used to basically pick about five of those questions and tweak them for Nesquin and just get, they were pretty general kind of- Softball. Yeah, softball questions, but just to get some engagement yeah. from the very first time that the committee's out there talking about trying to get engagement. So Great that's one concept. The other, the other the comment I'd like to make is about the vision and values. I think those are the total essence of the plan and what everything else is going to be built on. And if we start soliciting feedback about that, I wonder if that should be the topic of the first hybrid meeting, depending on how much emphasis we want to do on um. I mean, this is kind of the opposite of what I said earlier about um, leaving the vision and the values in place unless they're questioned. The flip side of that would be to just start out and say, the plan is based on the visions and the values. Is Are they the same today as they were 20 years ago? Um, but I don't think you should do something casual in between that's that like pretends to talk about the vision and the values. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I don't know, I just, I, to me, they are so important in being able to go back and validate the conclusions that I just think we need to be really thoughtful about how we address um, changes. And, and the contract idea. Oh, and then one other contact con comment. Uh, so I was a realtor before I retired. And on, on almost all of our contracts on the documents, on the side of the document was just a, a numerical progression of what every line was. So that when we were having a discussion about terms, we could say on line nine, or we could also say in section two, line nine, it says this. Then everybody could go right to the page. They could look at the line. There was no confusion about where what we were talking about. I don't know if the do current document can be um, produced in that way yes. without like sure. retyping every single line. But that would be sure. really helpful for us if we are talking about specifics to just be able to go back and say, Page five, line nine. Let's all look at that. It, can, it sure can be done. And and thank you for letting me talk. <laughs> well, we got to thank you because let's see, what was the date of your retirement? So uh, wait, wait, wait. we had a question as to whether we would uh, <laughs> support the asking of five, I would call them softball questions at the meeting yeah. on the next Saturday at the probably be in new business at the end of the meeting to uh, I think we would put it in, in, in your agenda holding item. set up Jeff yeah. 
Are you? you yeah, that's great. Muted or did I didn't know if you were had a comment there? Yeah, we we would put it in your agenda item. Because rem remember, Sarah, we're we're talking about the STR cap. You do not want to be after that. <laughs> um, well, hopefully, we're going to kick that can down the road. Um, I I I do not. Yeah, I, don't don't hold your breath. <laughs> uh, and, and and even if the can does get kicked down the road, you do not want to be after that. So. Um, so meeting after this. Uh, well, well, what, no, what no. I'm saying is, you, if you want that. to use part because because um, if if you want to use part of your update to ask questions, you can. My personal opinion is, if if it's just sort of a stunt where you're not ready to really use the information, may, maybe you want to wait and think about it a little bit, like like to to, to get ready, like something a little bit more substantive ready for April, but but uh um. But 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 if you think that there's value in it, that you you can use your time, you, you can do that with your time. So, I don't consider it a stunt because Sarah seemed to think that it was worth potentially even a mailing, which I think we should save the effort for a mailing for very substantive things. So, to me, it's not a stunt if well, if Sarah is saying I think these questions are. I, I just mean if you haven't like we spent time in Cloverdale asking people th th clearly, thought about like thought hard about what her, questions you want to ask. it was like, valuable sort information. Of like, we'll, we'll, we'll Whether or questions. not it should be at this meeting or another meeting, yeah. um, I kind of trust your judgment about that a little bit. But my concept was just that we tell them we're going to be involving them. It would be great to involve them. Maybe that's what I mean. Like, like if, if it's just performative to show people that you're involving them and you're not asking information that you've thought about that you that you know that these are the questions that you need the answers to, may, maybe wait and think about it. So that that's that's my input. Where, where are those okay. questions? Somebody have those. It's the um, I don't. It's it's the one that is it Hebo that used it's the one that Cloverdale used. So I'm going to go into my emails here and see if I can find it or into yeah. my docs. Jeff, one do you have things, those? One of the things oh. that we could do to bridge what Jeff said and what Lori said is it's an icebreaker questionnaire. We're getting going. We're going to get into a lot of detail really fast, but we want to break the ice by just narrowing the, dis or focusing, not narrowing, focusing the discussion. And so in that sense, it gets, it, and, and the only thing we ask is that they give us their email when they give us their answer. I mean, and all these people are probably on your email list already, but it's a, we're getting started. Here's the scope. I don't have it in my docs. It's she shared it in this meeting. So I wonder if we go back to the history of the, was it one or two meetings ago that she gave it to us? I'm, I'm going to put some links in the chat um, so that you can look at them. So, for instance, reading through that, um, potentially we could just ask the first one, which had 10 items that we asked them to rank. That, that could be us asking for a very high right. level general input about focus. What's destination management? <laughs> she explained that to us, but I forget what she said it was. I think it's like 
the, the, the beach is a destination and, and you have to kind of, it, it, it's managing tourists basically. Like that's my, that's my recollection. Maybe we should take a look at this list and um, revise it a little bit. That's more, you know, more reflective. And I think if we revise it a little bit, it could help us with the vision and values statement. Um, it help us get get started. I I like the idea of just a one question rank these things. Um, I think these are the for the most part the wrong things. I mean, there's maybe half of them that would. Yeah, I, I don't think these are the right things for Nesco in, actually. <laughs> um, I don't know, but. Um, yeah. I, I, we okay. would not. So what, want what I'm hearing is that we're not ready. Yeah. I think we could pick five things we'd like them to rank. I just, I think, yeah. we, I don't think it's hard for me to see even if you know healthcare just seems like a macro issue for for nesco that it doesn't scale properly to nesco in to but um oh i don't i would say health care is a big issue around here and lack of housing has a lot to do with lack of health care so it is a relevant issue to those who live here, maybe not who don't live here. Yeah, I I think I didn't say it correctly. I think, and maybe it's just, I think even if everyone said healthcare was their number one issue, it would be very, Nesco in as a community, It well, there are other plans covering healthcare that aren't in the land use plan. I mean, I, to me, I think it, it's not going to get addressed successfully through the land use process. It would be better if the community spent its time and formed a committee to participate in the statewide discussions of healthcare that are going on than to put it through the land use process. It's two, it's one big giant step away from the, the land use process's ability to address things. But I, you know, and and OHA does. Or, I mean, other surveys are done that are very sophisticated on healthcare for Oregon. Oregon's a small state, um, so I would, if so, I would. All I'm saying is, if someone picked healthcare as their number one issue, I would suggest that we have a community forum with the Oregon Health Authority, <laughs> um, and and do do that if we really wanted to make something happen. So I I have a comment. Uh... Is the plan only to do with land use? Because no. No. Uh, the current uh, bylaws say that it's land use, environmental impacts, public safety, and public health. Uh, right. That's those are the four think care about. So I think that's. But isn't that for the? Isn't that for the um, NCAC? It's all the NCAC. Yeah. Yes. So I guess to me is that anyway, it, we can certainly include if you want. I think we've got land use is going to be our biggest impact in the process we're currently playing in and environmental issues. And, um, you know, I I haven't seen a lot of child care developed out of LCDC. I think people sometimes like to talk about these things as vision things. But you know, I'm I'm too much of a pragmatist to. I'm all about getting something to happen, and it's a very long, circuitous route. Um, oh, and there's some faster solves. Is all I'm saying. I think the the second uh, set the ideas for questionnaire. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff here that we could come up with. Some different you know five question whatever rankings or whatever we want to do i mean there's a lot of things here that deal directly i don't think the first link is of value to us but the second link about the nesco and community questionnaire ideas has a lot of good stuff in it so 
Well, why could... don't we work on um, clarifying which questions yeah. might be appropriate to ask? And the committee can also day. always withdraw from doing that at this meeting. But if we would agree that we trust that we can come up with a question that fits the correct profile before Saturday so that we could break the ice with it, yeah. would the committee agree to doing that if we can circulate a question that seems appropriate? I think we would have to ask somebody to put it together and just trust it. Um, I mean, we can't meet again to approve it in any way outside of a regular meeting. But I think we can say, assign it to somebody, put together a quick question, quick survey, kind of in the idea of that first question on the other one, you know, rank these things or just to get it started. Okay. If we could say, you know, since Rand, you and Lori were. Yeah, you know, this, is the area, this is the area that we're trying to focus on is the community input. Go ahead. I, I think we should vote and say we we charge you to that's your one of your assignments. Come up with a quick questionnaire to do during your report at the CAC meeting. Okay. And, and I think, you know, depending, I don't know if we have the capacity to do this, but you know, I'm always intrigued when I just ask people an open-ended question about Nesco. What are your favorite what's your favorite thing about Nesco? And what's the thing that concerns you the most about Nesco? And I mean, I kind of leaving it non-guided at this phase is yeah. may introduce things we haven't thought of. Although again, you guys have a, have been listening to people about these topics in recent years. So if you think, so I go know. for it. I, Jeff, I think Jeff, a is that survey possible? will be great. Um, I, the, 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 the poll questions we can like, so, so I, I infer that you're, you're proposing that we do this as a poll as during the yeah. Zoom meeting, and and it's pretty limited. Like we can't even do the rank these things uh, except sort of okay r roughly. So like if you had five, you could have give people like pick pick a number one to five, and then hope everyone um, did it in the right order. But but uh, um, but basically, you've got multiple choice questions. Okay. And um, so 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 think about that. Like 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 make sure, like in and if you have anything. Um, fancy that you want to try, reach out to me and, and I'll see if, if there's a way to, to make it work. So I move, um, I move that we assign Rand and Lori to come up with a question, a quick question or a, a brief. It's an icebreaker that you're going to present. An icebreaker to help us introduce the, and give us some starting information on the plan and uh, do it for this thing. Anyways, I move that. Anyone second it? Second. Do we have a second? You can second it, Rand. Second. <laughs> second. Okay, all, right. all those all in favor. favor. Raise your hand. All right, pass. Lynn, Lynn. I'm raising my hand. I'm trying to get back to my screen. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> you just put your hand up. Okay. Thank you. All right. <laughs> okay. We will work on that and get that ready for Saturday and be in touch with Jeff as to what form it takes. Right. And we'll squeeze it. I don't know how we'll squeeze it into our five minutes. Well, but... Mark, Mark gave you 10. So, um, oh, okay. you have 10. Um, all right. Thank you. And, um, and, and, I, and I think you like you, you, you don't have a, I, I think you, like you can use, you can really have that be the main feature of your, your, your update, like is, is doing this icebreaker. So, okay. Jeff, are you going to put my, the, the what I called out as recommendations from 2001. Are you going to put that on our Google page? Um, Do we have a Google so page? It, it is it is in the document folder. Like we we currently like we we don't have you set up the way that the bylaws is set up with a a a way to get in there. So so it's it's not published yet, but it's like. Well, once Tom takes over, it'll it'll like it'll be uh, okay. all organized. So, uh, <laughs> but, but right. yeah, I, I did save it. it. It's in it's in the archive. All right. Okay. So we got we have some work 
out there and we'll we'll get working on that stuff um and the other thing is i'd like to introduce uh some new business and that would that involves the fact that we lost a member Kat Norlon is no longer a member of this committee and um I would like to put forth in the a meeting on Saturday that uh, we're looking for uh, volunteers for, we have to open this to the public, but my uh, recommendation uh, is that Tom join our committee and they probably wouldn't be able to vote on it until April. No, we're, 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 we're ready to put notice it today. Oh, to notice today, so a vote could be held Saturday. So, so there's no official amount of notice that ha that is required. It just has to be enough that people can make a decision about whether they're going to attend the meeting. And um, my judgment, and and Mark agreed, is that four days is enough for something that this shouldn't be really controversial. So it's not an okay. officer nomination. So yeah, I'm not important. So don't, don't not worry about it. <laughs> yeah, right. Thank God well, we, you're not important, Tom. <laughs> I, so what I am doing is like, like we'll, we'll recall that that we, we we weren't looking for a committee of five. We were just trying to get as many volunteers as we were um, we could. Um, and I am going to remind people that it's it's not like there's an open slot and we just stuck top in it and 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 in the dead of night that that. If someone else is 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 now going like, well, if Tom's on the committee, I want to be on the committee. Like that, they can also, um, <laughs> well, they, they they can express interest. So just just to, just to to forestall any and any kind of fuss about that that it wasn't properly open or anything. But nice. but but the the bylaws clearly give Mark the discretion to just nominate someone that he wants to nominate. So that's great, and we and we ask him to nominate. Um, yeah, so. And my also thought was. You know, we have actually, I don't even know if this is by design, but we represent all the areas of Neskowin. Uh, it was not by design. And, pardon? It was not by design. Not by design. And uh, I was thinking of what I represented because we got North Neskowin, we got Central, the, the, the village. We and With Tom, we would have South Beach. With Rand, we got Slab Creek. Uh, and I represent uh, people who live over 100 feet above sea level. So we... You know, it's like each crest we got it covered. Yeah. Okay. Well, Tom also lives up over a hundred feet above sea. Uh oh. Tom, wait a minute. <laughs> three hundred <laughs> feet. Yeah. Wow. Oh, geez. All right, then I'm less than three over one. <laughs> You're beach crest guy. You're beach crest. I'm beach crest. Yes. Okay. So, um, I think we just outlined the assignments. Uh, Can we repeat them just for, for posterity to make sure everyone's clear? Okay. So right. Laurie and I will be working on a question or questions that will be uh, run by the committee and approved for run by our committee and approved for presenting on Saturday. Um, Guy is going to go to land use ornament uh, or <laughs> ornaments? No, <laughs> ordinances. Will you tell me what you're doing, guy. I'm gonna. I am going to look at all the recommendations that were made in 2001 and see right. which ones were implemented. I mean, there are some in there uh, that don't relate to land use. So right. That's right. Okay. And. I think we might have thrown something at Tom, even though he's going to see if he can number the document in a way. Yeah, I thought, I thought that, that Lynn suggested something for Tom. Yeah. Well, I, it, pongling together all the parts that have been produced so far. Right. So Tom better describe that so that it's, so that he does, since he's doing what he's doing, that would be better. So tell us, Tom. <laughs> I'm going to try to interpret what with the inputs and come up with a map for the new document. Okay. A stretch goal is to actually organize it that way. I don't <laughs> think I'll probably be able to, but that's a stretch goal. That is very good news. And okay. 
after you, like maybe not this week, Tom, but after you are voted in, um, whenever your your bylaws work gives you the bandwidth, let's let's uh, sync up, and I will set you up with the same way that for 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 the community plan that you're set up with the bylaws with the library directory that you are an editor of and have control. Okay. Fair enough. One more thing I'll do is um, Rand and I went to a lecture last week uh, by a historian on the history of the area between uh, the Salmon River and Nesquilin. Uh We made contact with him uh, afterwards and I've had email exchanges with him and I'm going to ask him to review the history piece in our plan and ask him if oh. uh, there's some updates or thoughts or revisions that he might have uh, given 20 some years of, of thought about it. And he's, uh, that assignment alone, as Rand will know, will take up much of my time <laughs> just in email exchanges. He's very talkative, is that? <laughs> he's he, is, uh, he writes books for a living. <laughs> And writes, Walter, writes a books. retired professor it's, uh, from yeah. Lewis and Clark who, when he writes you an email, it is a chapter. <laughs> wow. Okay. A lot of sightings. <laughs> okay. Um, the agenda for the next meeting will include those reports and uh, probably a result of the poll and right. such. So, um, the assignments will make up most of the agenda next time. Uh, I think that's the business of today. So all of us should attend, if possible, on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And all of us should listen in to the Supreme Court this Thursday. Because <laughs> it is a historical, historical moment. Yeah. So... Well, Rand, I just want to say that I was notified since our last meeting that I'm now in the fast track, you know, queue for my sec my second hip replacement, and I will lose control of my calendar as soon as they give me the date because the queue goes around the block these days, and if you miss anything, you go to the end of the line. <laughs> so, so yeah. I will, but I will just send to you, Rand, kind of here's the meetings I will miss. And I will, I should know that this week and it won't be very many. And it's a, it's an in and out surgery. So, you know, you're cognitively fine within 24 hours. Um, or at least you, you think you're cognitively you think you fine. Are. God knows you're you are. <laughs> you're cognitively up to the level that you were a week before. <laughs> I, asked him that's him fine or not. <laughs> I asked him if I could take the LSATs, you know? <laughs> so anyway, okay. So the, I'll, okay. I'll keep you Thank informed. Thank you for that. Yeah. And just, uh, just so you know, I'm going to be out of the country from March 4th till the 27th, but I intend to take my uh, little computer here and, and attend from abroad. So it shouldn't Great. be a... Thank you. be a hiccup. Okay. Yeah, that, which which makes the, like, um, just confirming March 5th, you're, you're going to be somewhere around where you can do the meeting and... And yes. everybody wants to meet that day. Yes. Or it's it's fourth. Sorry, March fourth. Wait. So it, it is it's March fourth. So it's, it's not oh. March. 5th, it's Monday. So are you going to well, be playing or anything? Let's see. I, I touched down at five o'clock on the fourth. So in I might be in Portugal a or something. What? In, Lisbon. Where, Lisbon. Yeah, in Portugal. So so yeah. So you'll probably be so, well, so we better ahead of us by like like. Eight nine uh, hours. It's then. eight hours, I think. Eight hours. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, so it should be okay. Well, it'll be the middle of the night. So, so are you sure? About ten o'clock. Yeah. In Portugal, that's just starting the night at ten o'clock. Well, maybe he get, wants to go out and have tapas or something, and and um, I will <laughs> after the meeting. Okay. Yeah, I'll stay up and party with everyone until the meeting starts. <laughs> okay, I'll try to make it. If I logistically that doesn't really add up, um, I'll let you know when someone else can sub as chair. Okay. Um, all right. Are we good? We're good. So, so I just want like we 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 like Lynn talked about her plan, but but then we dropped it. 
and and, and I really want to encourage you to get out like into a mode where you are planning more than one meeting ahead. Um, so so it's four o'clock. Maybe you don't want to do that today, but um, I think it's very important that you 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 get into a mode where you are kind of you, you have a, a a a milestones that you're working towards. And in today's discussion was great, and you started to to put some of those out there, but um. But 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 I I really want to encourage you to to get into a a place where you actually have a plan and you're 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 following it and and not figuring out one meeting at a time what what's happening. So you know I would like speaking of that, um, Rand, if 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 you could assign a couple, like two people, I think a two person assignment thing is good. Assign two people to to revise the current vision statement. Yeah, I, I in a month I come down that we're all going to do that, and maybe also two people. But everyone got. That. I don't know if we can do values uh, because values really came off of their surveys, but uh, maybe just vision for now. Okay, well, I definitely think everyone should look at the vision and the values and understand if there's something they see that could be revised. And, let's, and let's do the it. ideas you have towards uh, achieving that without throwing the whole thing under a bus. But what I'm suggesting, Rand, is that we actually bring to the committee in a month uh, a draft. And if, if two people could come together and bring that draft to us. So we have something to react to and respond to a revision of the value statement, a vision statement. Rather than all of us kind of come up with ideas, let's have two people bring it. And I think that's kind of what the bylaws committee has done, is they've kind of assigned people, a couple people to each of those sections to bring drafts to the whole committee to react to. Am I right, Nancy? I think that's how you've got yeah, it. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. It works out really well. Okay, so... <laughs> So anyone who wants to jump at that opportunity so I don't pick the wrong person. <laughs> okay, no one's jumping. So I think it's going well, to say I'll, Lori I'll, and I'll do it then. Okay, that's great. You got a lot already. And uh, that should work. And we, I think we will share it before the meeting so you know what it is that we're putting forth. But uh, yeah, I think we should. And any documents, you know, that we have to share, I, and I apologize for the recommendations that I pulled out, but I didn't do it. I didn't finish it until this morning. So I didn't get it out. But we should, anything we have, give it to Jeff. He can distribute it. Yeah. And just, just put it in the subject line, like for distri distribution or for something. For distribution. Like that, so I, right. Sounds great. And send it if it's for distribution. Send it to admin at at, at Nesco and CAC because because then it won't get lost in my personal emails. Right. Okay. All righty. Okay. Well, thank you very much, everyone, and thanks to our guests, Nancy, uh, Alex. I guess your your part and parcel is and, programmed. And, uh, thank you. You you thank didn't you. do public comment, so I don't know if Nancy or or Alex wants to do. Sure. Public no. Go ahead. Uh, just real quick, I, I just want to thank you. It's been interesting hearing you guys talk. You have a lot to deal with. And uh, uh, we are getting into the really nitty gritty of the bylaws. So, Tom, I, I hope you have the bandwidth for both committees plus all the other stuff you do, because Tom does a lot for a bunch of other things, too. But I'm sure you, you'll you know how to do that. Um, and I'm uh, not to overcommit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because uh, he is definitely vital to the bylaws committee too. Um, just wondering if you could make documents available. Thank you, Jeff, for for sending these out. But uh, it's it's helpful to uh, even for guests to be able to review. Um, I I wanted to follow up on Tom's comment about you know the bylaws, including you know the the intent of the NCAC is more than just uh, the 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 urban plan and uh, urban planning and input to the county and we first heard that from Guy when we were getting our bylaws committee started that 
that early on, I think the NCAC worked really hard to be able to handle more than just uh, the, or the planning part of it and uh, and providing input to the county on a very narrow area. So uh, I'm hoping that the community, that this group is going to look at, at more than, you know, a broader area. Um, and I'd be really interested in hearing about the historian. Did is his uh, talk online somewhere? That or no. is it was it live? It was live. live. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, and um, I mean, I mean, it was fortunate for us who were there. Yeah. And, yeah. But uh, we suggested that uh, to the people who put it on that they somehow should capture that. Um, whether I don't know how they would do it with the slides. The slides were unbelievable. No, and one good thing um, for those who are interested a little bit in is that there is a, a group of people in Neskowin, <clears throat> including this historian who lives in South Beach, um, who are putting together a picture book of the history of Neskowin. Oh, yeah. and, uh, and he's provided a lot of old, very 1880s and on photographs uh, Neskowin and and a whole bunch of it's become this great community project of people coming together with old family photos uh, and it's going to really in some ways enhance what we're doing with at the same time that's going to come out as our community plan comes out because a big part of the community plan back in in you know the late 90s and or when it was put together was capturing the history and I think this book this it's kind of a coffee table book uh, every photo having captions and, and things. So, uh, anyways, great project. He's he's amazing. The lecture was amazing. <laughs> so, thank you, thank you. When does the book come out, Guy? Grant, Alex, you guys funding? Uh, is that what they're doing now? Looking for money? Yeah, they to print the or to pardon me to print the book or to to print to sell it. Um, right. So they needed probably initial cash to start, but I don't think they're done yet putting it by any means. No. I, think putting it together. I think I saw on the Facebook page that you have to have it in by sometime in March. I think any entries that you have, any okay. pictures wow. and that kind of thing. Okay, cool. Cameron, uh, Cameron Nagel is the main contact person there. So, okay, thanks. All right. Well, thank Alex. Any comments? Oh, no, no public comments from me. I'm um, okay. just happy that I haven't been able to attend uh, a, a meeting here in a, a bit. So happy to uh, to sit in and see all of the work and all of the all the background work that has to happen that a lot of people don't get to see. Yeah. OK. All right. Well, thank you all. And thanks for your input today. And Jeff for facilit facilitating all this. And Tom yeah, for thank you. being here and everywhere. <laughs> okay. All right. Watch for an email about Tom in your in in the next half hour or so. Okay. Okay. All, All right. right. Meeting adjourned. Thank you again. Bye. Bye. Bye.